time when a university degree was highly prized and even worshipped, by the way. In a village, a graduate would be praised and showered with all kinds of honor. Many yearned to even enter the gates of a university institution, at least to boast and say, I was there. Families have forfeited all kinds of luxury to make sure their children make it to the university. Cattle, houses, and pieces of land have been sold all in the name of university education. Students have sacrificed pleasure as they burn the midnight oil just to make sure they are not left behind by the train of university education. However, when you hear of university strikes that end up in looting and destruction of property, you wonder. Drug abuse, abortions, low quality education, sexual immorality, and lack of job opportunities after graduation, all these are disturbing. The question remains, is there any good that comes from universities these days? Now, I want to talk to student leaders here. We have uh, Felix Lon, president of the Kenyatta University Students Association. Welcome to the Power Breakfast Show. Uh, Zach Kinuthia, our chairman, a student's organization of Nairobi University. Welcome. Perhaps, let, let's answer that question. Let's start with you, Zach. Is yes. there anything good <laughs> <laughs> that comes out of universities these days? Um, I, I would say there's everything good coming from the universities these days. Mm -hmm. Just to answer your question, as simple <laughs> as it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, generally, Felix, yes. in your view. So he says everything, everything good. Um, thank you for having me. Yes, indeed there is a lot uh, good that is coming out of the university. I think, um, as it is uh, a general norm, a lot of focus will go to the bad but there is a, a lot of amazing things still coming out of the institutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's yeah. bad, there's good. Perhaps yeah. let's, so that, so that we understand where we are at, perhaps we could start with you, Zach. You mm -hmm. are the chairman. What does that mean? Um, looking at it multi-dimensional, uh, I am the chair of a uh, student at the university across the modules. We have three modules. And uh, that means basically that I am the legitimate uh, voice of the concerns that affect us, mm, both you political. Mean the students. Yes, the student, ah. the student from the country. I have uh, a board of sixty-three thousand students that I chair. That I use. This guy. Yeah, that I represent, and uh, that means basically that I, I am, I am the chief lobbyist of their interest and uh, their grievances, uh, as, as, well as, their, uh, as well as their pleasure. I, I, I modules, what are these modules you're talking about? Module one, module two, module three. We, we have or all modules. in terms of admissions, uh, student uh, two groups? Yes, yes, oh student groups. Yeah. Yeah, we have module one, the government sponsored. We have module two, the self-sponsored. Mm -hmm. Module three, the distance learners. Right. Those who learn from, uh, not within the precepts of yeah. the university. Oh. Yeah. That is to mean that uh, I, I am ch ch chiefly Chiefly, I, I, I air the okay. concerns. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's dig into the meat completely. There are mm. three facets. There's the education, there's the lifestyle, and there's the politics. Yeah. Now let's look at uh, uh, the education. Y those modules you're talking about, 63,000. Mm. That is a lot of students. Yeah. Um, part of the problem uh, that we're experiencing out of, people are saying that education has been degenerating in the universities. Mm. Do you get that sense, uh, you know, if you look back into history, without being defensive, eh? mm. yeah, just yeah, looking yeah. at things practically? Mm. Yes. I would say, uh, Bernard David, eh? there used to be days, as uh, uh, Mwakazi had said, that a lecture hall had 20 students on a certain course, to an extent that now the 20 students that occupied a lecture hall has now skyrocketed into a hundred or 150. That one, I would say that then it has gone down. Uh, I, I, I mean, the dissemination of knowledge is the same, but now the lecturer is covering more students, and therefore he has more work to mark scripts. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that one makes him fundamentally uh, demotivated when he has more work, and maybe the pay has remained the same. The output also is less. If the, you have the output, 150 yes. and you have uh, 30, definitely mm -hmm. the demand on your time the quality of attention mm. goes down, right? True, yeah, you'd serve that better than 150. Yes. Mm -hmm. So to that extent, I would say it has gone down. Uh, but I also wanted to say that 
as opposed to those years, demand for education has gone higher, and the state has encouraged that, which of course is a prerogative for growth and development of uh, any state. But to say that um, education has uh, gone down, quality. the quality of education has gone yes. down, I would uh, agreeably disagree. I would say it has agreeably yes. disagree because even then, among the 30 students who used to be there, yes. there used to be people who didn't get the quality that was coming from the lecture halls, yes. from, from, from the tutors, yeah. from the lecturers. Yeah. In every market, yes. there are some people buy what is good. Yes. And not necessarily, what will be good to me may not be good to you. Yes. I mean uh, that the quality of education had been and is, mm. but the recipient did not get it equally. Uh, do right. you agree? Yeah. Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, not <laughs> chairman anymore. <laughs> 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 Mr. President. Um, yeah. Well, we have to agree that uh, we are feeling the pressure. Even as the student representatives, once in a while you'll see that the class is full. Whether that compromises the quality, I cannot for sure ascertain. Because one, <coughs> we also have to be objective and look at it and say, one, uh, at some point, the government introduced free primary education, and there was mass enrollment. So all these people uh, have to be accommodated in institutions of higher learning. And that is what is happening today. So invariably, um, and by default. There's something called student-teacher ratio. Isn't that really suffering, you know, and we're really doing badly in that regard? Yes, uh, we, uh, to, a, to, a large, to some extent, I would say, we have had those concerns, we've raised them with the management. But as I, as I was explaining before, this is sort of something that was going to be default, that the Kenyan population has increased, um, one. Number two, the demand for education, as Zaka said, has also increased. But let me, uh, let me take a different view of this. Mm. When, uh, during those times, perhaps when we had 10 students, the access, to, uh, the access to information, perhaps we didn't, we didn't have as good access to internet, as good access to alternative sources of information yes. as it is today. Mm. So while then uh, we had 10 people depending on one book, we may have 100 people depending on, say, two books, yes. but still have a really wide range access to the same, to the same, yeah. uh, to the same information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, um, saying blanketly, that uh, the quality of education has been compromised and that nothing good is coming out of the institutions mm -hmm. is not objective. We, we, we sort of have a trend here where more and more people are preferring to go to uh, private universities as opposed to public universities. Is that a uh, let, let, let me address that mm -hmm. first by complementing what you said. And then you say that uh, you asked a very good question, the student Teacher ratio. Yeah. It is pathetic. It's badly pathetic. Yes, because if you look at uh, the high numbers, yeah. the number of lecturers, and a lot of people have left university, mm. or they are doing you know, consultancy work and teaching at the same time. Mm. So the attention to the students is flagging. But also just the numbers, the student to teacher ratio, mm. is, I mean, classes used to be 21, mm. a good class to mm. 30. Mm. 27 average. Mm. It's mm. a standard good class for a teacher. Yeah. If you attend a lecture mm. and you're addressing 150 students mm. at an education uh, hall, Bill, yeah, at, uh, you know, how is the how is the teacher able to attend to each of the individual needs and differences between all these students? Uh, I'm telling you it is pathetic. When I say it is pathetic, I complained when I was a first year. Yes. And I'm sure I'll complain even as I live next year. Mm. Because you look at it and see that we have, like, let me say, a de department of sociology in the university. Uh, it has a student, about six, six, six to 10,000 students who are uh, on a certain period in class. But you see, the instructors about are about 30 or 40. Yes. So 30 versus 6,000, 50 versus 7,000. And they, they try and they try. Yeah. You see? But you see, they are strained. The, the, cap the capability of teacher to deliver quality yes. is compromised at all. Yeah. Then yeah. coming back to you, uh, private universities. And people public prefer universities. to go to private universities. Mm -hmm. Of course, like uh, uh, when, when one is doing a course on mass communication and, and journalism, many people would prefer to go to private universities, which has 
specialized in that area than going to public university, which are starting like the student, the, the, the university I am in Nairobi, um, we have only started the school of journalism the other day, and therefore we do not have uh, we, we do not have that experience of offering services that people would want to come. Secondly, private universities, people believe that it is difficult to fail in the university in the private universities because uh, th they are more commercial based than the public university where lecturers are stubborn. They, mm. need, they need not to make you pass. Mm. They are not accountable to you at all. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to give a contribution again, I think this calls into, uh, into question the general tendency that we have as a country when we are formulating our policies. Mm -hmm. uh, when you are starting a project like the free primary education, are you anticipating that five or ten years from now, uh, what is going to happen? And I think uh, we have failed as a country, and uh, that those consequences are being passed on to the young people who are getting into institutions right now. There is no sufficient accommodation space. Uh, there is no sufficient, uh, uh, the tutor-student ratio is really pathetic, uh, as my colleague said. And government is reducing uh, its subsidy to higher to institutions of higher learning 